builder's log. Just how long is an inch? Alright, so I'm at a stage now where I'm calibrating my machine and I kind of wanted to share that with you. So, here, um, the whole computer is infested with Ubuntu, okay, uh, which is an operating system, and along with Ubuntu, it comes with a program called EMC. So, we're going to look at EMC, and we're going to look at the machine, and we're going to correlate the two together uh, in a way that is called calibration. Alright, so to get started, we have to launch the EMC control wizard, which is located under applications CNC EM2. Okay, alright, now I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and I'm just going to move this around. Um, I want to quickly jump between software and hardware, so I'm just going to use my handy cam for this. Alright, so I'm going to go forward. I'm going to modify an existing one. Open that one up. Alright, so it works kind of like this. One, you can call it anything you want. The important message on this screen is the speed. Okay. At first, I thought it would be good to turn it down, but that was a stupid thought. So I'm back at 10,000. 10,000 works really well. You should probably keep it at 10,000 and work around the speed, unless you have a really, really slow stepper motor, um, which half the time when you order a stepper motor, uh, sometimes it's labeled, sometimes it's not. I didn't have a driver timing setting. It doesn't say that on a stepper motor. So you're just going to have to jump in there and guess. Again, I left it at 10,000. It sounded like a good number. Uh, this one right here, you can get that number by jump starting your BIOS. So get into your BIOS and look for your LTP port. Most LTP ports are at 378. Okay. Now, if you have a really slow machine, you can run the test based jitter and it will give you a number and you can put it here. But other than that, um, that was a good number for this machine. This machine is pseudo slow. You do not need a top of the line machine for this. You can run it off uh, almost a little professor calculator, in my opinion, and it still works great. So just don't do anything else besides the CNC program and you should be set. Okay, forward. Ah, this is a good screen. So this screen right here, what you do is you hit, when you get a controller for your CNC machine, it's going to have pins for your LTP port. Okay? And the LTP port has 25 pins, I think. Yeah, 25 pins. And then you just have to designate what pins do what. Okay, so let me take you on a little field trip real quick. Okay. Over to the LTP port. Dun, dun, dun. Alright, so here's your 25 pins on an LTP port. Some of these are going to chips. Keep in mind that the, uh, it is going like this. X, Y, Z. Okay. And here's an example. Pin 16 wasn't really working for me on my LTP port. I couldn't get it to work. Oh, no, pin 14 wasn't working, which is right here. So I cut the lead and put it over on pin 16. Okay, field trip over. Let's go back to the docking bay for you. Bam. All right, so that right there, now pin 14 is unused. And I put it on spindle on on pin 16. Okay, what does this mean? This means that when you buy a controller, you know, just about any controller will work as long as it has an LTP port. Because really, you are designating these to a lot of different things. You can. It's, it's expandable. 
So don't be f fearful of what controller you buy, just as long as it has an LTP port. And uh, it could drive a unipolar stepper motor. Cool. Forward. Next. Now this is the fun screen. <laughs> this one you're going to be stuck on for quite some time. So I'll show you my, my way of getting off this screen. Motors step per revolution. Okay, now when I bought a stepper motor, it didn't have this. Uh, it was in a ratio of some nature. So I didn't know what it was. I plugged in a number, and we're going to plug in a number and see what the machine does. So in this case, it was 100. Um, I'm going to change that here shortly to like 200 and show you how I got it back to 100. Micro-stepping is 2 of that number. Lead pitch. This one's easy. I'm using quarter 20 thread. Okay, so that is 20 revolutions per inch. So 20 goes there. Uh, maximum velocity, I put just 1 and I can up this as soon as I get more power to the machine. Right now I'm only using one ATX power supply, but if I increase that ATX power supply, I could probably get it to, you know, two or three. I could have them run in series with each other. And now I have a, a bigger machine. My first machine was um, only eight inches. Now I'm going to go ten. Keep in mind the pallet is actually twelve but until I get it down perfect as far as calibration is concerned you should always go a little bit under that number so you don't crash and burn into the side okay so I'm gonna actually change this to 200 to goof it up and this one to 200 so these go the same way X Y and Z with the exception of Z travel table is negative 0 0.05 to 4 it's actually five. I went one inch. And forward and apply. So that allows you to now click this icon. Launch my mill. Okay, another fun screen. So what you do here is you jump start your engines, you put the key in the ignition and turn, and finally you click the spindle on. Okay, what does that do? Field trip time. Okay, if everything went right, when you apply power to your ATX power supply via a plug, like I'm doing right now, and you have spindle on, you should hear a noise. You shouldn't be able to rock this back and forth. This, this spindle is now on and it has a great deal of tension there. Okay, so that's good. You should check all your stepper motors to make sure that that is occurring. Okay, back to software. All right, now you can control your machine by going like this, X, Y, and Z. Okay, and if I hit X and then hit plus, I should hear a really annoying noise. Okay. Why annoying? Because I had not set the jog speed. So the jog speed for this machine, since I have only one ATX power supply, is 1.7 inch. Okay, how did I figure that out? Deduction. I moved it to one inch and it sounded okay, then 1.7 sounded better. Two does not sound so good. Okay, that sounds a lot better, right? Okay. 
So you can see, when I press that button, uh, this is what should happen. Good. Now, the nice thing about having a 12 inch platter is you get a lot of doodle room. Okay, but I'm running out of doodle room right now, so I gotta jog this over just a little bit in Y. I can raise my Z. Oops, that's Lorient. And I'm just going to get to a point where I can make an inch. That's all I need to do. I just need to tell it how long is an inch. And that's why I got these calibers here. That's probably good. I don't want to make this movie that boring. Okay, so what I'm going to do is lower the pen. By the way, if you look here, what I did is I took a pen apart. And I put it inside the actual Dremel. Okay. And then what I can do is go like this and see if I'm making a mark. So I'm just going to lower this a little bit more. too much. Right about there. And to be sure, what I can do is just move it to next just a little bit. See if it's wrong. You see it has a little bit of a drag on it. So I want to try to eliminate that drag as best I can. Reason being I can't calculate for that drag. Now that it's a little bit taut, I can go like that and you can see it evens it right up. Okay, now it draws a line without dragging. Good. Back to here where we can learn a little bit about G code. Okay, so what we're going to do is go over here to home these. Okay, so you have to home all your X, Y, and Z. You just click the box or click the radial button. Click the radial button and keep homing each one. They should all reach zero at this stage. Okay, then you type a G code command for Y because I have enough room in Y to draw an inch. And it's a G0 space. Y1. So this is set to inches in my uh, configuration. So therefore, I'm going to use inches here as one. All right, now hit go. So cool. running out of, um, it's a crappy pen. <laughs> Another thing that could indicate is my platter needs to be adjusted flat. Okay, so that was one inch. Now, I'm no wizard yet, but I would say that that is not an inch. So let's measure that bad boy. And it should be about an even number because it's quarter 20 after all. So it should be in like quarter increments. So it's one, no, it's two inches. Okay, so that's easy, right? 200 equals two inches. All right, let's do some deduction here and say that if 200 equals two inches. 100 would be, yeah, that's right, an inch. So that's how I kind of figured out things. Um, now, of course, there is calculations for this stuff, but if you keep it, 
keep it an idea that quarter 20 will always make an even amount of turns okay because it's an even number um, and then you keep your speed and stuff an even number you should be fine so I'm just going to modify this configuration open it up uh, go to the next screen forward and slip that back to 100 now you could go in increments of 10 also down until you get down to 100 if you didn't know what you were doing like my first time it wasn't just that easy I went from like 200 to uh, 1 or 200 to 190 200 to 180 you know I went down and then I realized that it was just moving for every 10 uh, a quarter of an inch so I've figured out 100 Alright, there we go. So now the next time I launch, should be able to draw an inch. An inch is an inch. Alright, now I know that's gonna work, so I'm not gonna drag you on with that, but um let's see, let's look at the build real quick. Get an understanding on how it looks now that it's all put together. So parallel port LTP goes to a computer which is down here. Alright. So you're going to need a computer, you're going to need a head, and you're going to need the head to be close to the machine. Do not try to second area, like my, my other one's way over there, so I don't want to use that one. Um, I would start out with a, a small Dremel, no doubt about it, because you can put the ink thing in there. That's nice to calibrate. See all my punch down panels actually work now. I got X, Y, and Z. Uh, my Y finally came. The small Malaysian boy from uh, Malaysia passed out at my doorstep trying to get it to me. He is now dehydrated and resting in his camel. Yep, just the same. But there it is. And now we're going to be running an actual G code thing now that I got an inch. So that's going to be in another video because this one's getting rather long. And I hope you enjoyed the calibration video for my CNC machine. Enjoy.